Welcome back, Blockchain from Scratch Part 2. Uh, today we're going to build transactions, uh, so very exciting stuff. But before we're going to get into that, I want to go back to 01 hash because I, I added some functionalities to the hashable class. I added this JSON method, which creates a JSON string out of any hashable object. And we're going to need that for our API later on. Then we have this set attribute method, which is a built-in Python method, method which gets called every time an attribute is set or changed. And if that happens, we want to change the hash of the object. So every time the set attribute method gets called, I want to set self.hash to our new hash value. And the, the last functionality that I implemented is the string, string method, which just prints out the object in a nice way. So nothing fancy here. Now let's get to the exciting stuff uh, and talk about transactions. Um, what, are, what are transactions? Why do we need them? Um, and I think a good way to, say, to think about them is in the, uh, is in the following sense. Uh, a blockchain represents a specific state. So for example, if you look into Bitcoin, a Bitcoin always has a specific state of balances. So the balance, uh, the state of uh, Bitcoin could, could be, for example, that I have a balance of 10 BTC. I don't actually have 10 BTC uh, because 10 BTC is a lot of money, but just for, for example here, um, someone else could own 5 BTC, another person could uh, own 0 0.5 BTC, and so on and so forth. So this is the state of balances. And the only way to change that state is through transactions. So you can think about transactions as the only input into the blockchain system. If I want to change the state of the balance, I have to create a transaction. So for example, I could send someone three BTC, I could create a transaction, I could sign that. And, and by the way, we are gonna talk a lot more about signing later on, especially in 04, we we're gonna talk about keys and wallets and accounts. But if I created that transaction and I signed that and I sent it out to the blockchain, the state of balances uh, will change. I will lose the 3 BTC and someone else will get these 3 BTC and we change the state. So transactions are this little state transition function. And on the right here, this is our block explorer that I showed in the last tutorial. Uh, we can see a transaction and its attributes. A transaction, of course, has, an hash, has a hash. Uh, it has a field that says, is this transaction actually signed or not? In this case, it is. This number refers to the block that the transaction is included in. The timestamp is, of course, the, the time of creation of the transaction. The from is the sender, is the address of the sender. The to is the address of the receiver. And value is, of course, what we're going to send. So in this tutorial, I'm going to use Ether as our currency, but you could have named it anything, right? You could have named it Sharif coin if you want, it doesn't matter. And then the last property, which is actually very important, is the nonce. So what is the nonce? The nonce protects us from replay attacks. And replay attacks are the following. If I create a new transaction, and broadcast that to the, to the blockchain, someone else could take the transaction and copy it a hundred times and resubmit that transaction. And basically I will lose all my money. But because we have this nonce, you cannot do that. Because every time I create a new transaction, my personal nonce will increase by one. And if the nonce changes, the signature of the transaction will change as well. So 
No one can copy the transaction and resubmit it. This is very important. So this is the nonce. You can think about the nonce as the number of transactions sent from this specific address. Right? So that was our block explorer. Let's jump into the, the actual implementation. So we're going to run our last notebook, import this deep copy that we're going to use, and then we're going to implement our transaction. So our transaction will have a sender, of course, the receiver, the value, a fee. I actually forget, uh, forgot to include that in the block explorer. The fee goes to the, goes to the miners. Um, it's a motivation to, to, to the miners to include your transaction in the next block. And don't worry about it. We're going to talk about mining and blocks a lot more later on. But we need that here in this transaction. And then, of course, the nonce. And then we're going to set these attributes um, for the time. We're going to get the current time and we're going to set the sign flag to false. So if we create a tr new transaction, it's not signed yet, right? Then we're going to override the set attribute magic method from our hashable class and set the signature. If, if, if someone sets a signature, we're going to set signed to true. So if, if signed, signed is going to be true. Then we have the summary, which just prints out in tra our transaction in a, a, in a quick and easy way. OK, so if we run this, now we can create random, uh, we can create transactions and RH stands for random hash. This is something we implemented in 0, 01. And in this case, we're, go we're just going to create random transactions. Right? So the sender is somewhat random. The receiver is somewhat random. We're going to send, um, we're going to send 12.0 because it has to be a float. Um, in value, we're going to include a transaction fee and then the nonce is of course zero because it's the first transaction we're going to send with this random address. Okay. So if we run this and print this out, we'll get this nice, we get this nice uh, output. And we also of course have this summary. So this is the same from, and it's the same receiver and the value is the same, of course. Then for our API, we can create a JSON, a JSON string out of our transaction. Um, and then we have load transaction, which actually just takes in this JSON string and returns its transaction object. Uh, and here we're going to assert that the transaction object is equal to the transaction that comes from, J from our JSON. Right? So, I have, I have these assert statements all over the place and they're basically little tests to make sure that our implementation does what we wanted it to do. So if we run this, everything is fine. We don't get an error or something. Then we have this transactions to string, which takes in a list of transactions and prints them out. So here we print out transaction one and transaction two. And then we're going to check if we implemented this set attribute method in the right way. So here we're going to copy transaction two into transaction two false value. And we're going to change the value to 120. And if you do that, the hash has to change. And if you run this, now we can look at the transaction and actually the from stays the same, so the address stays the same, the to stays the same, but the hash changes, which is good, and the value changes as well. So this is basically another transaction, right? And you would have to sign this again. 
And this is what we're going to check for in this assert statement. So we don't want the transac transaction to be equal to the transaction with the false value. So this runs. And then what I do here is I, I sign a transaction, but I just mock it. I just say transaction one, I copy it into transaction one signed, and then I set the signature flag to a random hash. And this is like a signature, not a real one, of course, because we're going to implement that in 04, but just a, a mock to check that the hash is not going to change. So if we look at transaction one, the hash is this, and actually the hash didn't change. So if we now compare our assert, uh, our assert it runs, right? No error, transaction one is equal to transaction one signed. So this is great. So this was it. Um, we're gonna use transactions everywhere, right? So this is one of the most basic building blocks that we're gonna need. And in the next tutorial, we're gonna talk about Merkle trees, which are these really interesting data objects that we're gonna use to make, uh, to make things more efficiently when we're creating a block or when we do mining or when we create a block header. But we're gonna talk about this a lot more in the following tutorials, right? So see you in the next one. Bye-bye.